I want to get into this, bro. And you a church guy. Let's talk about it. You grew up in church. I grew up in church. I, man, listen, I loved growing up in church, bro. I did too. I grew up, but see, I want to talk about something. Yeah. But I feel I'm pretty sure your 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 experiences can can relate. Okay, let's talk. about I went it. to this church called the United House of Prayer for All People. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. And it's all over the South, Midwest, the North. Yeah. The, it's only like a couple in the West. I, I think I saw one in Norfolk when I went. Bro, to it's State. like yeah. two in Norfolk. It's yeah. like three in Newport News. It's one in Richmond. Um, you got like two or three going toward D.C. You got yeah. like four in New York. So it's ma- it's all over. So it's major. It's all over the world. Uh, that all down in Savannah alone is like three or four, and it's Savannah. Yeah, and then Florida, you got them. California, you got them. Texas, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, North, especially North Carolina. <laughs> everywhere, they yeah, everywhere, grow everywhere. I'm talking about it's like millions of people in the country. Okay, that and it's a big multi. To me, I think billion dollar, but multi hundreds of million dollar corporation. The House of Prayers. Yeah, the House of Prayers. Used to, it was founded by. Uh, this dude named Daddy Grace. We okay. call him Daddy Grace, but everybody else call him Bishop Grace. But in the hospital, they call him Daddy Grace. You ever seen James Brown? Yeah. Remember when James Brown was a kid and he went to that church and the guy was had long nails and he was preaching and the band was playing? Yeah. That is the house of prayer. Okay. No, no, that is that was literally the house That's of prayer. Literally. That James Brown family was in the house of prayer. I think it was either that was Darren, Georgia or Augusta, Georgia. Okay. That was that was that was a a, picta- a dictation of um Daddy Grace. All right. It looked just like him. Light skin from Portugal, he got that weird accent, got the hair slicked back, long nails. Yeah, but I felt like his message of the church and then the next person that came up was Bishop McCullough. Yeah. Their they were two different ways. You know what I'm saying? Daddy Grace was more of the spiritual. Daddy McCullough turned it into a business. Yeah. Like like millions of dollars business. That's you know when they kind of spread out and got yeah, it all yeah, around. Yeah, Started getting real big money. Like, yeah. Yeah, like started buying property. Started buying mansions. To the point where the bishop stays in a different house in every mm. state that he goes in. Yeah. Maybox. Fucking wraiths. Mm. All types. Living a life. The bishop, man. The bishop. The bishop. Now, um... The My generation mm-hmm. is Apostle Madison. Yeah, I grew up calling him Daddy Madison. No, no, not being weird, I could never call him anything but Daddy Madison. That man, did, he he was my childhood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went to church every Mondays for band practice, or choir rehearsals, or, yeah. or band uh, marching band. How to forget marching bands? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They have they have their own parades. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Uh, Monday, Tuesday nights, past nights, Wednesdays was band practice, Thursdays was youth night, mm-hmm. Fridays was was uh, some kind of program, Saturday was another another program. People, motherfuckers come out from all around the country with buses and and shit just for a Friday Saturday night program. Yeah. You hear the bands play, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, uh, uh, my life was the House of Prayer. Mm-hmm. I've been playing music since I've been seven years old. Yeah, that's what the House of Prayer taught me. That's where I got the music from. Like okay. I've never read music until I was. 14, 15, but I already knew how to play it. Yeah. Like, I can hear something and play it. You see how my little brother Donovan is? Yeah, Donovan. You can hear something and play it right back to you. Yeah. I play baritone, trombone, trumpet, Mm -hmm. tuba. That's like me and the piano. Yeah. I did everything, bro. And it's like, I gave my life to the house of prayer. Yeah. And as Daddy Madison got older, the services started becoming shorter. The business started taking over the spirituality overlapping like we used to have we used to have rehearsed like uh uh revivals mm-hmm. that would last to like three four in the morning nigga you know yeah, how rocking rocking all rocking. night and we got bands. i know those come on you know i know we rocking. got bands so you got like the march like the shout band yeah, trombone. trombone i know you play that trombone bro, bro, yeah look bro, i used to come home with busted lips from playing so hard bro yeah. like all night long like bro it's, it's, i used to get a high from that shit mm-hmm. well that being said i used to date Exclusively only House of Prayer women. When I was in the House of Prayer, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I never really felt like I can say I didn't belong in the House of Prayer, but I wasn't by blood born into the House of Prayer. Okay, like Donovan, I'm adopted. Mm-hmm. Like Donovan, his his it's in his bloodline. His daddy, his granddaddy, his granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they, it's in his blood. With me, it was more like this is something I was doing because I'm around it. Yeah, but my mind. Was always one of the other things because the second I got into high school marching band, mm-hmm. I was fixated on on that. Yeah, that I didn't kinda, care too much yeah. for the house of prayer no more. I wanted to be fucking 
doing the you know what I'm saying? The, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the fucking jump line shit. <laughs> yeah. Popping my fucking Rocket. pelvis and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigga said pop do 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 You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wanted to be nasty on the football field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to do it. And then the bitches, the girls, like we had all the girls in the march. I don't know about up up north, but down south, marching band is life. Like the drum line just came out. Uh-huh. That was my life. That was that drum line was my life. From the, I went to FAMU from the sixth grade all the way up until I moved to Virginia. Mm. I went to FAMU for band camps and fucking band invitationals. I was I did all that shit. I knew Dr. White on a personal level. Yeah. I was destined to go to college when I lived in Savannah. You know what I'm saying? But when I started making that transition, I was still wanting to fuck with the hospital. Hospital got some of the most beautiful women. Yeah. They didn't want to fuck with me. What do you what do you think what do you think it is? You think they noticed that Because they 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 would say a lot of house of prayer women, they say, oh, they would tell me, oh, you're not spiritual enough. You just, because I was 16, 15 with tattoos on my hand. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got <laughs> oh, my first tattoo yeah. when I was like 15. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like, bro, like, you know, I'd be, I was smoking weed and shit. Mm-hmm. They were smoking weed too, except for well, they come to, not them, but my niggas in the house of prayer. But yeah. I wouldn't, I stopped coming to church like that. You know what I'm saying? I stopped. You know what I'm saying? I call it fake shouting. I mm-hmm. stopped. I stopped doing all that shit. I stopped that doing that shit. Passing out and jumping yeah. up and yeah. I stopped if you, doing if, that shit. If you're not feeling it, you just you chilling. Yeah, chillin', I stopped doing there. that shit. I stopped trying to make myself feel something. Yeah, I stopped doing that. You know what I'm saying? And although although some of the words would be good, I started noticing how the hospital became more about money. Yeah, like it was like, bro, like when Daddy Madison third when he really died, mm-hmm. nigga. They wouldn't even let the bands really play like revivals in at eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They they want to get the money up, get the money after offering, offering damn near thirty minutes, forty five minutes, <laughs> offering. And then if you don't get enough money, you know what, dear hearts, we don't have enough money. Multi billion dollar company, <laughs> and you over here stressing out all these God, poor black people. Gosh, God, God is still telling me there's a ten thousand dollar seed out in all. I don't know the audience. Bro, your dad and mom run their own church. Yeah, definitely. Y'all are not even in a shitty neighborhood. Yeah, not at all. Every house of prayer damn near is in the worst part of fucking town. So so do you feel like it's a bunch of poor people supporting this church? Supporting it. And, and they bleed you, you think were, they bleeding them? Bro, if you bro, this is this is the day I left the house of prayer. Okay. I left the house of prayer officially when I heard about this woman. The house of prayer has property in DC. And they was renting an apartment to this woman in the house of prayer. She been in the house of prayer her whole fucking life. And she couldn't afford the rent. Yeah. They evicted her and they took her shit and they threw it outside. Billion dollar. This lady been get, paying offering and tithes her whole fucking life. Old lady now. Yeah. And y'all evicted. An I elder. feel like no house of prayer fucking member should ever be homeless. If you've been in the house of prayer for X amount of time. You you should get a free funeral. Yeah, like they they should never charge you for a funeral to have a funeral at the house of prayer. They should never charge you if you need help. You should be able to call on the house of prayer. Yeah, like come on, like bro, like most the most house of prayer gonna do is be like, oh no, nah, not on pastor's night because you can't do shit on pastor's night. <laughs> pastor's night is for the pastor. That's for only. the pastor. Don't bother. You know what I'm saying, but mm-hmm. have a little fundraising and take some money up for you for you. But bro, like suppose you've been a member for ten. 20, 30 years, you've been paying your tithes and offering. Yeah. You short on your fucking rent. They about to kick you out. You homeless. Your church right there. You can't go in there and ask people for no help. You can't do that. And it's crazy because the members, it's so backwards to me because the members of the House of Prayer wouldn't get, wouldn't put their money together to give it to you. Yeah. But they'll put their money together to give it to Bishop Bailey. Mm-hmm. That's what blows my mind. Yeah. The House of Prayer, at least in Richmond, at least, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, I can't say that because Richmond is progressive. Mm-hmm. Apostle Taylor in Richmond was giving back to the community. But it's very rarely that you see the House of Prayer doing shit for the community that they are in. And I think that's I think that's one problem that a lot of people see with the church period. You know, a lot of people see the pastors doing well. You know what I'm saying? I can only speak from my experience with my the parents. pastors aren't even doing well in the House of Prayer. It's the bishop. The, okay, like the so, bishop getting so off. okay, so okay, so top pimping this motherfucker. Okay, so break that down to me because in most churches in in, in Virginia, there's a pastor and he's the head. You're saying there's a nah, a bishop that's. Do you look at it from the pastor owns the church? Yeah, 
These pastors don't own these churches. So you so you said so, <laughs> nah. so you saying there's a bishop. The House of Prayer is a conglomerate that owns all of these fucking churches. Yeah. They basically the only thing they pay, they don't pay these preachers. Mm-hmm. The preach the preachers live off a of house offering. Okay, I see. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So <laughs> it, they in a pyramid scheme. The, at the, <laughs> that gives me to this. The House of Prayer bands. Yeah. Bands don't get paid shit. But you know that most churches, the musicians get paid. Get paid every not every at the on, house the dot, on the and not the at service. the house of you can't even go out and play in the public and get paid. They they forbid it. They don't like that. You can't like if your your band is called the Madison Sounds of Joy. You play in Richmond, Virginia. If you wanted to go play in at the park as a band and yeah. get money and start making a career doing this shit, the they house of prayer would forbid it. Damn. Like they've created this music. Like you didn't sit there and learn this horn on your own. Like, bro, like, it's a lot of sorry-ass niggas in the house of prayer that are couch warriors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that, that ass that are sorry niggas that don't yeah. do shit but travel and play their fucking horn. Don't got shit going for them. And all they know is that fucking horn. And they got million-dollar talent, but they'll never know because they're too busy stuck in that fucking hellhole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just can't do shit. They can't, they can't be themselves. Which gets me back to my subject. Band boys run the house of prayer. Mm-hmm. The women in the house of prayer don't fuck with niggas. They don't fuck with niggas like me. Like, I'm a regular nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am worth more than 90% of the niggas in the house of prayer. Because a lot of them niggas that are fucking, not band-wise. Okay. A lot of the niggas that are in the bands are broke. Sorry. Compulsive liars. Deadbeat (laughs) fathers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Couch warriors. Couch you warriors. You know what I'm saying? You give me with that couch yeah, warrior. They fucking, they be fucking these, they be fucking bitches for a place to stay. There's a lot of house of prayer women out there that passed up on me to get a fucking roommate, mm. basically. Have a nigga living up under you, beating your ass, asking you for money. You know what I'm saying? To buy him some chicken wings from the house of prayer. From the House of Prayer cafeteria. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, Well, I've been watching. Hey, sorry as a bitch. Look, I've been watching Leah's. I think it's like she's talking about Scientology and her whole journey with them. Who? Her name is like Le- Leah something. You know the, the lady from Kings and Queens? She, no. Okay, so it's this lady named Leah something. She's talking about Scientology, which is like a religion. John Travolta was part of it. Tom Cruise. And they require you to do like a whole lot of like learning. You got to mm. give a lot of money to them. But I've I've noticed that you know man a lot of different churches and different religions and and, and and denominations man they just do they just do things differently you know so Scientology is its own monster it's its own they're monster fucking, they're fucking weird. They, there's always going to be a large amount of people in church the house of up there with that them. just simply follow the rules and it's and it's bro I just feel like and it's not all of because some house put people go there because that's all they know that's all they know that's all they know but then you got you got some of them. Especially, especially, and I don't know too much about the House of Prayer, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but especially like the young people, you feel me, the, the young people, man, they have no, that. They, and they be very judgy. Yeah. Like they like the House of Prayer people have, I literally know a girl, I ain't going to call her name, but I knew a girl in the House of Prayer that told me that I was like, I need to take better care of my soul. I need to come back to the House of Prayer. Like I'm going to end up dead or in jail or some shit like that. This is mm. the same girl that I know. Three separate house of prayer niggas, band niggas, <laughs> fucked you. Yeah. Fucked you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bitch, like, how dare you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, our bitches that be, they literally have sucked multiple dicks from niggas from the same band and will look at me and be like, you're not saved. You're not sa- <laughs> <laughs> well, they, Wait a minute, bitch! Yeah. I'm not saved. You that because you get up there and you shout and foam at the mouth. You better than me, like bitch. Please, I am a whore. At least I know I'm a whore. You know what I'm saying? I can admit that. I can admit that I'm a I'm a I know I ain't no thief. You know yeah. I don't steal. But you know what I'm saying? I've been a liar before. I've been a nigga that done slept around. Mm-hmm. I I can admit that I'm not fucking perfect. But I'm pretty sure God will let me in there. Yeah. Before He let you in there. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm true to myself. Man, I'm not out here passing judgment on people. A lot of people, a lot of people say that the church is one of the most 
judgmental places. Like you said, I don't go to church every the Sunday. The Christian church is. Yeah. Like, the Christian church definitely is. Like, it's just what it is. It's just how they are. Because it's always a contest of who's holier than, than now. Yeah. Than now. How you fucking say it? But that's Hol- how most holier people, than now. Like, most people become, Christianity is, and, and Catholic, Catholic, Catholicism it's the only religious I've ever seen motherfuckers really be in competition with. Yeah. I'm, like, more, I'm more holy than you. I'm more holy you. than you. I'm holy yeah, than I'm you. Like, yeah. yeah. And, bro, like, that's how it be. But with the house of prayer, bro, yeah. it can definitely be misconstrued as a fucking cult. Some people just don't look at it like that. It's the whole calling your bishop daddy thing. Yeah. I, I never had a connection with this bishop, Bailey. Yeah. I never had a connection with him. I knew him before he was the bishop. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how did he become... Supposed to be the, the 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 Jesus like the basically like the new Jesus or something. So the whole the whole calling the bishop daddy thing that's something that's required. No, it's not required. They 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 call him bishop. Sometimes like most most members call him daddy because they supposed to be like um the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ is in that bishop. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot mm. of people get it construed. They talk, oh, you think you think he Jesus? Nah, they just feel like he has the Holy Spirit in him. If that makes sense, they don't think he's Jesus. They still give praises to Jesus. Yeah, they give praise. They read the same Bible you read. They talk. They talk about God, Moses, and all that. They, they do the same thing. They just think that the spirit that mm. was in Jesus is in is in the bishop. Now, as a child, I thought that was what it was yeah. with Daddy Madison, because in, I was a child. Where like I'm seeing as an adult, I see. The financial situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you I, see the business aspect of it. the business aspect of it. And, bro, like, the house of prayer women. Mm-hmm. They did me dirty, bro. <laughs> they did me dirty. <laughs> like, bro I, bro, I think it's only been maybe two house of prayer women in my life that I had a connection with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, two of them. And they both live in, they both from Savannah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a real connection, like, yeah, and they both was like childhood sweethearts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like everyone else though, as I got older, like I realized that these bitches ain't want no nigga that that's doing good for themselves. Man, it, bro, it's simple. It's simple and plain, bro. You might just be outside of the circle, and they can recognize that about you, bro. So nah, cause now, now, them bitches getting thirty years old and up. And they, they they probably they start, start they probably start they step out of the house of prayer. Out. They done been burnt out. They, they been stepping out of the on. house of prayer. And they done been stepped on. You got uh-huh. a couple of kids by this sorry ass nigga that played with the angels or something. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? You like you're burnt out, and now you went to a nigga that just doing good for himself. Mm-hmm. Before you just want a nigga that was saved. Mm-hmm. Now you want a nigga that's saved and doing good. And doing but good. now, but now you go on the save part. You know that's kind of bullshit. You'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah, now, you'll yeah. be flexible on that. Now, one. now you just want a nigga that's gonna help you take care of shit. Yeah. That can pull his weight. Now a nigga that, that can sing that make your pussy wet by playing a horn. You don't want that no more. You know what I'm saying? You understand that horn don't mean shit. Yeah. Here it is, ten years later, and motherfuckers still sorry. He the same nigga he was when you first met him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's all I'm saying, bro. That's how them house of prayer women be, man. Yeah. I, I put a status up about that shit a couple of days ago. And I had like a few people had their fucking panties in a bunch about that shit. Like, yeah. that's not all House of Prayer women. Well, look. It's not all House of Prayer women. They'll definitely have something to talk about now. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying, it's not all House of Prayer women. Yeah. It's just the majority. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the I'm majority. Just saying, I'm just saying, bro. Yeah. It's the majority. Bro, some of the sorriest niggas I know in my fucking life get the most pussy in the House of Prayer. And these bitches be sitting up here like, Oh, he's gonna change. Well, I love him. Oh, a family that stays together and prays together. Mm-hmm. I mean, a family that prays together stays, stays together. together. Man, fuck all that shit. That's that just, nigga that's gonna just still be ch- that nigga gonna still be drinking. You know what I'm saying? He gonna still be smoking. Mm-hmm. And you gonna be you gonna still be buying his fifths and buying his eighths. Mm-hmm. And he gonna still be beating your ass and then going to church praying about it. And then soon as the next weekend come, gonna do the same all over again. <laughs> all or, over again. Or get you to pay for his trip to Charlotte or his trip to to convocation in some place that he can't afford to go. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping on some nigga couch, mm. playing with some nigga band. And the whole time he fucking some other bitch, and you just <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man.